You will get your beloved show back in a couple of days, but this is right here, Mike, proudly a safe space for Heat fans to again resume being able to watch sports. Because if you care unreasonably about tying up your identity in the only sports team that's mattered here for 20 years and has had you in fights for, for 20 years in, in trying to own the conference, this team is something you care about unreasonably and you could not watch yesterday and you could not watch anything. I don't know if you watched the postgame press conferences. Chris, did you, after you wrestled the vending machine in, <laughs> in the media dining area during uh, halftime in a way that I still can't believe was it, it is the single best thing to happen, the entire Eastern Conference Finals, to look up at halftime and see a room full of media members looking at Chris Cody, who had just gotten done with the red velvet cake and was now in a too tight shirt wrestling a giant freezer that he could not open that I could not tell whether it had ice cream or just simply sugary drinks but he was he distracted This is all just asked if I watched the post game no Dan I didn't <laughs> Thank you for that setup <laughs> I looked great, by the way. I looked like a professional. Too tight, of a <laughs> hey, really? geez. Too tight shirt. Red velvet cake? Where'd that come Sorry, from? Sorry, I didn't get the skateboard memo. <laughs> um, Tony, it's good to hear your voice Aloha, Dan. again. <laughs> Tony has oh, arrived. God. Yes, he's arrived full Hawaii. He's got a shirt down to the navel. It is Does a, he ever? It wait, is a, wait, this is Chris not getting the skateboard memo? That's here. Memo? I have the skateboard memo. At the arena that night, I didn't have the skateboard memo that Dan had. Tony is uh, a Detroit Tigers cap away from looking like Magnum P.I. right now. Yes, he looks totally yeah, ridiculous. Look. He came in here. It's a good look. Okay, well, Miami dresses down, and he looks, yes, a bit like a Hawaiian, uh, yes, a CBS hunk who is, who solves crimes. He also looks like Johnny Depp in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That he does. He has been away for many weeks on a Hawaiian vacation. He has brought some Hawaii with him. And if you're anything like us, Tony, when you're away from the microphones for three weeks, you've got a lot of thoughts on a lot of things. So uh, welcome back. It's great to be back. Uh, the vibes are immaculate. They will only to be copy and pasted here with this kind of Elo shirt, Hawaiian style. Everything falls apart when I leave. Everybody gets COVID. Like the entire AC system falls apart here. People are sweating. Billy's calling me out. There's a reason why he's not here today. Obviously, coward, evil cat. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll get yeah, to that but, in a little bit. Yeah. Cody doesn't know that he's not here today. What he did still I do? thinks he's in oh. one of the corners of the room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, you know what you did. Uh, I was. I joined Mystery Crate at six in the morning because I missed being around the uh, the Attention. team and stuff. You give me, but you're the one that texted me. Anyways, you like the attention. I saw you put out a Michael Jordan type press release. Yeah, up your return. Yeah, to that's right. I was, was back. That? I'm back today. They, 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 can can you guys seriously? <laughs> Tony overestimates in a way. Tony, when he came over to Metal Ark, I think he thought that ESPN was gonna like have taken a mortal blow and that mm, everybody was super did. excited about Tony's return. And I feel like uh, <laughs> I feel like Tony Tony did up, <laughs> upon returning from a Hawaiian vacation. He sent out the Michael Jordan "I'm Back" press That's release. Right. That's right. Yeah, contact people if you want any information on that uh, for bookings and other things as well. I do parties, bar mitzvahs, all that stuff. Uh, the more important part <laughs> is, right, I'm I'm on vacation. I'm hanging out in the Hawaiian sands, kind of poly, beautiful beach, okay? More to that, you know, more to that to come. I get I get messages, I get DMs, I get texts. Hey, the guys are talking about you're on this four-week vacation. People are saying that you just got here. By the way, I've been here for a year, never taken a day off. The entire year, minus the two weeks that I'm allotted, Oh, by the way, we have unlimited vacation here, by the way. I just took two weeks. That's all. And I'm buttoning another. It's been a very long time, Tony. You've been gone a long time. I have. And a lot of things change. And more importantly, you know what? The vibes weren't right. And I felt it all the way in Hawaii. And that's why I'm here to make sure that everybody's back that's together as a family. Did yeah, you get the Ricky back. Weed uh, video? Did That'll you guys be out this week. Uh, uh, seriously? Yes. And I spoke to the Cuban pilot. That'll also be out this week. Wow. I've also I've also got a set of Tony's Hawaiian uh, weekend observations ready to go. Wow, oh, look at you. out too. All so, right. So I was also on a plane for like twelve yeah. hours, which sucks. Yeah, Hawaii's far. Not only far, Dan. There was really bad weather on Sunday, so we had to. We were about to land. We were twenty minutes away from landing. I felt the plane starting to descend. All of a sudden, the the uh, the pilot comes in. No Cuban pilot, by the way, a regular American pilot. He was like, "Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have to go back to Tampa because the." Uh, the airport shut down, so we had to stay you in Tampa for three so hours. Whew. 
I finally got home. I got to so put it this way. I got into the plane 1030 Friday Mike, night. He's just in beginning Hawaii. with his flight. This yeah. is just the material so on his flight. No, this is what, yeah, I, I what I'm telling you. Because he has been steaming for three weeks. He's been he's been steaming uh, longer than that, Dan. Thank you. Steve. <laughs> wow. He's been on a romantic vacation with his wife that does seem like it was very long because he was very tired of not securing the Ricky video that he was sent to the Super Bowl for. And he had a lovely Hawaiian <laughs> vacation, and we're just now on the portion because he also has promised more. He said more on that in a minute. We're just at the flight portion of his observations. Tony's backed up for three weeks. If I get out of the way right now, he will steam bad opinions all over our yeah. show for a full 18 minutes uninterrupted. Let's hear him. I, I don't know about bad opinions. I was actually starting reverse, right? It was more of like a... An inception kind of thing. I'm starting at the end to then go back to the beginning. So the, you're the quite the storyteller. Yeah, thank you. Like you are. Please give me a break. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, that, I'm tired why, of Billy. That's why it's funny. Well, you're yeah, tired, I'm tired of, of Billy. Billy. I'm tired of both of you. Look, Billy's delighted because he's not here. All he's done is just shit on the show from over there. When you're tired of Billy, he's got you right where that's, he wants he you. Is, yes, look at him. I mean, I've never <laughs> seen him. They're on the ropes here. now, my he's friend. Not, <laughs> Billy, how do you feel? You so, got the switch, Billy. How do you feel so far about Tony's performance coming in hot off vacation? We threw him the show. He grabbed the ball and he shat himself in the key. Well, we went over, the, we, we kind of just glossed over the fact, because you mentioned, like, when Tony got here, the whole situation. I don't know that we've told the story that when we had that 24-hour marathon, Tony planned this whole block where he was going to do this big reveal yeah. and dress like Ric Flair. Yeah. And it was going to be, like, this giant moment in the marathon. And everyone was kind of like, wait, what is this now? Like, we have to plan something else. And he was like, no, no, we have to have my big reveal. And then eventually we were just like... Tony, buddy, no one cares. All right, we'll be fine. You're here. Thanks for coming. But I also had a job to, to do, do and I was in the back thing. video yeah. editing for like 24 hours yeah. straight, Billy. Yeah. yeah. As you went home, I recall. <laughs> you guys I mentioned. Weak old baby. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> did, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Anyways, the flight. The more important thing is the flight, right? So on the way back, oh, it's boy. Saturday night, 1030 at night. I'm getting on a plane right out of LA, LA to Miami. I get in the plane. It's 6.30 in the morning. I land in LA. We have a two-hour layover. It's 8 in the morning. I don't leave the plane till 9 o'clock at night. So that's that. What's the point of this? <laughs> Good story. story. To piss you off. Tony, how Damn. do you come flying in off a of vacation to rescue the show heroically wearing a Ric Flair boa and just put a shit streak stain across the front of Big Suey? Well, uh, that was more for the freedom thing, the Rick, you know, the Ric Flair boa thing, and then obviously some stuff happened. I didn't want to do the Ric Flair thing. You know, Welcome back. Thank you. The first one can be rough after a couple, after like a week off. One week is I'm usually flying. tough. What are you like, talking about? I, I mean, he's actually I flying. He's actually doing fine for like. Wait till you hear the observations. This place moves fast, man. You leave after you leave for one week, Chris. Well, I don't think uh, your father. Yeah, he's okay. flying. He just detailed the two-hour flight delay. <laughs> well, no, no, the flight. No, that was a layover. The delay was like five hours. Explain my, it again. Oh. My mistake. Yeah, it was about, a good yeah, story. Tell it again so I can get every bit of it. Nah, I'll yeah. tell you later. What'd you do on the layover? Just curious. Hey, Tony, when you buy a shirt without buttons, what's the markdown on that? You get like 20% off? I got this one for free. Way? Yeah, free. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why are you thinking about it? I am. It looks good. <laughs> I don't think I could rock that look. Chris Cody, we get your father in a state of disrepair when he hasn't done the show in two weeks. he uh, You may have noticed in the first hour we were talking local sports. He is a Miami Herald, uh, Miami Heat legend covering the sport a long time <laughs> journalistically. He didn't even have a seat for Game 7. Yes, the show. That's a long story. He wanted he wanted the Heat season to end. He wanted the Panthers season to end. He was at a That's cruise. A he, a he's lie. saying it's very hard work after being a, at a cruise when the basketball season started and when one of the big games was playing. He was at a concert and was bragging about it. Couldn't be bothered to cover it. Um, Greg Cody, the show was thrown to him in the local hour, and he stared at me and he hemmed and he hawed and he didn't have a single thing to say. He just stared at me and said, "That's right." Doesn't know where Billy is. The show's moving fast. He thinks Billy's in the room. Billy's not, not gonna think. I said plenty in the local hour, or the local whatever it was, the first hour, the local hour. You know, you guys put out about forty podcasts a day. I don't know what I'm on, <laughs> but um, uh, I, I feel like I talked a lot. I really did. Uh, my my voice almost went, which is why I got a budget in my speaking. But uh, no, I, I talk plenty in the local hour. 
And uh, and and in terms of taking Game Five off, uh, I made the right call. I saw Sir Paul McCartney in concert. Excellent concert. He's about to turn eighty. He's just terrific. He really is. And the Heat took a big uh, that night. So I made a good call. Good night to take off. You're really right. Was. I mean, it the was Heat part. took off too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The, in fact, I saw the Heat players at the McCartney concert sitting right next oh, to me, which is why God. they lost by yeah. thirty yeah. points. There it is. It I'm was sure unbelievable. They were all there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you got his eyes, and yes, they were all than, there. Uh, Tyler than Hero Riley. was there, yeah, right, right next to you. Exactly. Uh, again, Greg Cody's exhausted from this uh, rigorous, rigorous playoff run Thank that he, where he judges how injured players survive, and he missed part of the playoffs on a cruise and missed one of the key games while at a Paul McCartney concert. Correct. Those and tickets couldn't have been worth how much they cost. I mean, let's be real. Well, your wife take I mean, my wife takes care of all that stuff. But I don't feel the least bit guilty about that. You know? Okay, you don't have to feel guilty, but this part you might feel guilty about because your son has noticed, as have others, because people are tweeting the show. Man, Greg Cody on this show sounds like he doesn't have any idea what he's doing. But then he goes on Tony Kornheiser's show, and he sounds so professional, no coughs, no snorting, no bad sounds. He sounds like a professional broadcaster who is the best version of himself on somebody's show that's not ours. We have not been able to reach Greg Cody for two weeks because he's been so busy covering the playoffs while on a cruise and at concerts. Yeah, and ill. But he went... <laughs> and on the Kornheiser show. But he went oh, on yeah. the Kornheiser show, and evidently, Chris, he killed it, correct? He just he just murdered it. Everyone says, that's the best I've heard Craig Co Greg Cody be at any time during the pandemic. It's just really his lack of awareness where I missed two Levitard shows in a row. Let me tweet out the day after that, promoting my appearance on Tony Kornheiser. <laughs> hey, I love me some tea corn. <laughs> I really do. Oh, Jesus. He, he's really good. Uh, he's, what he's, does that have to do with anything? Well, because I, I think you were he's right though. last he's week. Right. I mean, he can't do a radio appearance just because he missed yeah. a couple of shows here. I exactly. mean, he's working hard. He's Thank on you. two beats. You right. know? Yeah. I mean, Tuesday, I, I woke up. I, I was not feeling well. My voice had left me. By the time uh, Kornheiser calls, I'm, I'm feeling well. So I agree to do the show. Uh, he's a gracious host. He asks me, tees me up for sports questions. Uh, he gives me plenty of time to answer. And, uh, and I appreciate that. Is that Plus, a shot at Dan? Yeah. No, no, not at all. But uh, also, I'm I'm reeling Kornheiser into my own Greg Cody show podcast. He's never going to do He's it. He's going to be a guest very soon. I'm reeling him into the big GCS. Home and boat. home. That's yeah. right, little yeah. home and home. Yeah. Uh, he's a big get. He's a whale. We've gotten him one time, I think, in 10 years. Well, we're not getting well, him we, on the Greg Cody show. I bet you Greg gets him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Same. Greg's yeah. always there for him. Yeah. I'm always there for him. Yeah. The, the money's on me at this point. So I'm reeling him in. Tony, if you're listening... Um, uh, we'll, we'll be in touch with you. I'll have one of my production staff, uh, be in touch with you and we'll see you on the great Cody show soon. It'll be fun. I'm not going to ask you about, uh, you know, Will Bond. I'm not going to ask you about, uh, Levitard. I'm going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. You'll enjoy it. Look Ooh. forward to it. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it. Do uh, you, you think this show is an answering machine message? Like, you think that Kornheiser, I don't understand. He's listening. You, if he's listening, yeah. Yeah. Right. He you listens. Ju you just left. You... He made a request, Dan. Instead right. of, yeah. Instead of calling was it him. Was he dictating a text? No, I, what I'm telling you, Chris, is your father has not, this is my point. He doesn't know where he is or where we are. He doesn't know if he's in a world where he's leaving a voicemail or he's on the show. Like, he when, sounds great today, he, though. He, he Thanks, Billy. He, he comes in Appreciate that. bombing on Woo! vacation. You saw what he, oh my God. Yeah, it was a little rough. I thought I could reach that note, but I couldn't. You were getting confident. Yeah. yeah. You want to yeah. try the Ric Flair woo again? Like so I'm at a Panthers game. Okay. Is Mickey in there? Eisner. Oh, God. I know. We're coming back. That's sick, Mickey. I mean, yeah. March, March <laughs> Simpson. Sicky. <laughs> March <laughs> shot. <laughs> March shot? What? I sound like March Simpson. Oh, for the love of God. Anybody but March shot, please. God rest her soul. But not really. Not really. Okay. No, there not really. Go. Thanks, Roy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> God disturb her soul. You need some backup put there? It, put yeah. it on the poll, please, Guillermo. God rest her soul, but not really. <laughs> you know, and, and I don't think there's ever been anyone in sports that I could say that more definitively about. Then, oh, yeah, that was the racist owner that was sort of into Nazism before Nazism before we took quainter forms of racism <laughs> in Donald Sterling's team. Right.
She was ahead of her time. She was so, she was a pioneer. Yeah, woman, she woman, really was. Woman was getting, collecting Nazi paraphernalia and she owned the Reds. Is Sterling next in terms of people you don't care if they rest in peace? I mean, he is next in sports. <laughs> Rest in peace, but not really. Let's do this. At Lebitard Show. <laughs> What's the top of the list? Because I think that Greg Cody just closed the game. by Because you can't say it about a lot of hers in sports. I mean, Arp Riles, technically he's already there. But, I mean, no one's going to care if he rests in peace, right? God rest her soul, but not really. You want her soul to be restless, jostled throughout the eternity. Yeah, exactly. She sees under it. Say? You, think, you think that her, her bone structure, when it lived in its vessel on this earth, when that soul departed, instead of resting in peace, you think it should go through the attorneys, uh, the eternities, and and get shaken and stirred and reminded, hey, back when it was a skeleton, Marge Shot was racist, yeah. and you deserve to have this follow you through through the beyond. That's, that's correct. I mean, no ill of any person, but in this case, I'll make an exception. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Jeremy. Can you imagine? I appreciate that. Can you imagine that? Was that Billy. As oh, a, no, it uh, wasn't. It was Jeremy. <laughs> it's like when you tell a joke as a stand-up and there's one person in the back laughing. Mm -hmm. You want to take that guy to dinner. And then you say that just... another person's name? Yeah. yeah. Mike, Again. I want to see if I can takes one. lure you here into anything Brown's related as uh, football season is is going to get here quickly. A hundred days away, we're, Dana. We're already arguing. Uh, we have dueling propaganda between the video team of the Dolphins and the video team of Tyreek Hill so that uh, everyone can have an opinion on whether or not Tua is underthrowing Tyreek Hill already. We are going to be starved for the football stuff in a second. But Jarvis Landry, who I was surprised to see, oh, already at the bet your, bet your career deal. One year, $3 million, incentives, New Orleans, don't know what their quarterback situation is going to be. Okay, is this going to be the end of Jarvis Landry battering his uh, – he's betting on himself one season. And for some reason, he has put up on his Twitter account, is it Godfather photos? Does anyone know what the, the soap opera elements of this as it ties to – the, the Cleveland Browns and him leaving the Cleveland Browns and Baker Mayfield feeling like his body didn't buy him anything in Cleveland and the whole thing disintegrated, right? It was going to be Jarvis and Odell and Baker and they were going to reinvent the proud Browns and then Odell ends up a champion somewhere else. Jarvis is, is grinding out the end of his career and Baker's no longer welcome there and the quarterback situation is, is now Deshaun Watson and he's going to play in New Orleans with the rest of his career. Uh, I'm looking at what you're talking about right now on his social media. The scene from The Godfather, I Knew It Was You. Mm, yeah, the ultimate so, betrayal. Yeah, so who's uh, who's Afredo here? Hmm. We need a worldwide WAB investigation. Not sure what he means by this. Could be the agent that he fired because he was not happy with the, uh, the offseason market. He had an opportunity to go back to Cleveland. It was on a one-year discount. I guess harder to take that one-year prove-it deal for the team that you feel like you've proved it for plenty. So now he's in uh, New Orleans where he played college football, and that's uh, that's that. He, he's, he's a remarkable player when you look at his statistical output. He got off to one of the greatest starts in NFL history at the position, but now it's kind of seeming like his body's starting to wear down a little bit. But let me ask the group and the people who have been tired of the Cleveland Browns dominating a news cycle when we needed to talk about football the last few years after laughing stock, laughing stock, laughing stock, then expectations. Here come the expectations. And what gets with Odell Beckham's arrival in Cleveland that makes them now pivot to questionable at best moral choices is the bridge from laughing stock to mediocre, but with expectations, the bridge to that ground up to bits the bodies of Baker Mayfield, Odell Beckham, and Jarvis Landry, like Angio Thomas, too, somewhere in there. But just the, the bridge, uh, it was a little bit before, and Joe Thomas did a lot of the losing, but the bridge to wherever winning resides at the other side of we laugh at your legacy, like those three bodies got torched by the, by the all of it. Um, and the Cleveland Browns are probably going to be better this year, but the bridge to something better was those three bodies. And I wouldn't blame Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham and Baker Mayfield for being really bitter about like, oh man, we do you remember what it was before we got here? Like, we made you matter, and it 
like it crushed us to dust, but we couldn't support anything at the end. Baker was playing hurt. Jarvis is trying out there with his body, and all we've got is three million in free agency. Yeah, and the one that they were only interested in really bringing back, even though Baker's still on the roster, was was Jarvis, but at a very stark discount. That's that's a business of football. There's plenty of other teams that do it that don't get that much shine. They had a lot of expectations. The only time they ever seemed to perform was when there was a recalibration of expectations. They lulled you into thinking, well, no, they're actually bad. And then they would put together their best streak of football. Uh, I'm rooting for Jarvis. I think he's a good guy. I think he's got good football left. He's one of these guys, a precise route runner, does stuff after he catches the ball that I think he can end up having a long career if he finds a way to stay healthy. Last year was kind of an outlier for him. I'm rooting for him, even though I'm not rooting for the Browns. But but that phrase... If he finds a way to stay healthy, like we've kind of seen what he's doing. We all know the transaction that Jarvis Landry has made with his body over 10 years of largely meaningless football, correct? Like we know all the slices at the ankle, whatever it is that it requires to play that sport. We're all well aware that he's been grinding his bones to dust for another half yard for a long time. But for the most part, he's there every week. I mean, he missed four games last year, and that was the first well, time in his career he's missed more than yeah, one. But he, so. he shouldn't have been out there a lot. He, he was a shell right. of, of his former But do you self. understand why those guys would be bitter about trying to get the, the franchise at the very end over over the hump? It was Jarvis. We're, we ride or die together. And then it's Odell's dad saying, oh, my God, get us out of here. Uh, Jar- this is all bad, Jar- uncomfortable. Jarvis had a huge hand in why this season turned out disappointing. He had a huge fumble against Pittsburgh in that home game that they had that uh, Pittsburgh stole from, from the Cleveland Browns. And if they win that game, they have a shot. Uh, against the Cincinnati Bengals, a team that they swept, to actually play their way into the the postseason. It's that fragile, man. Listen to the, all the ifs you just. It's that fragile, yeah, man. Yeah, he had a he had a big time fumble in, in a late he, drive, and it actually hurt Baker. The perception of Baker, because if Baker has that big comeback at at the end, it, are you be, not are you not fascinated that your team that the the margin it's not for his error, team anymore. It's, anymore. It's, it's really not my team. I was the, interested that you brought me to the microphone to talk talk Browns. I understand why you did it, but you might as well come to me and say, hey, let's talk Chargers. Because I, I don't care about this team. I, I talked about it extensively in Friday on Friday's Big Suey. It was why I feel the way that, that I do. Go go for it, Jarvis. I'm actually kind of rooting against the Cleveland Browns this year. I think their fans deserve a winner. I think it'll be really weird for me if Deshaun gets handed a suspension and all of a sudden i got to see the same Browns without the problematic quarterback under center perform. I'm really interested to see how, how I perceive that, but I'm not rooting for anything good to happen to that franchise. Billy, to feed your worst impulses as hey. the show pivots into Donovan Mitchell land. Why is Joel Embiid so publicly flirting with Jimmy Butler, with the mama, there goes that man? And Probably all- wants to be here. He's about the culture, obviously. Is that what's happening? It's as simple as that. We're going to pivot to, well, okay, fine. Just put the end of the process over here. And Jimmy and Joel couldn't do it there. What are the pieces involved in that lure Joel? Just explain this to me. The the pieces involved. How do they involved- get Joel Embiid? Um, I think you trade Duncan Robinson. Right. And then you get Embiid. Or maybe you do a three-team situation where you get rid of Duncan and Oladipo. And then you bring in Embiid. And Durant. That should do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you, I mean, look, I'm not Andy Ellisberg. He'll figure out the numbers of the situation. But I feel like you do that. Maybe toss in a Kyle Lowry for sheets and gigs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then you get the two guys that you need down here. And then you take the next step. Because we can agree, Dan, that they're they're close, but not close enough. Like, right. Jimmy can't do it alone. We well, learned that. He's well, great, but he needs something else. He needs more. It seems like Dan wants to run it back, but I ask you this seriously. If you offer Bam and Tyler Hero from, uh, for him B, does that get it done? I'm Please stop. Well, like you, you, yeah. need, you need contracts that match up I mean, and not You these, asked. Just not talking, these, yeah, right. and I regret asking. Uh, I do. Uh, you came to me. I mean, what did chat, you think was going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was hopeful and trusting as I forever. But then am I gave you something realistic, is what exactly, I tried to me do. Too. No, right. you, no you, you have to make the contracts match up. I just thought, I'm curious because Mike Ryan actually cares about the things that he's saying and actually cares about this team. If you're pivoting to. I'm going to emotionally respond to changing the blueprint. And Joel Embiid is publicly flirting with you. And at every turn, him and Jimmy are wink, wink. We'd love to be together. Um, 
you don't you'd have to trade bam and all the pieces to you you'd have to trade everything of value to put them two together you can't get levitard shipping guys out of town whoa remarkable it's a bad luck for you (laughs) it is you have to see these faces you go to that building can we just appreciate what they just did, Dan, before you start trading everybody yeah, away? Yeah, seriously, what's run, wrong with you, Levitard? Come on, But it's, it's funny to me that a team worried about injury issues now wants to trade for Embiid. That's funny. Well, it's it's pretty unprecedented that you have a player on social media, even though he goes by Troel Embiid on social media, kind of <laughs> given the optics that he wants to be down here. It's, it's odd. I would say that Jimmy's also kind of sent up a flare that he wants to be with Embiid. The, the only thing that we know that's definitive, it's not that Embiid wants to be down here in Miami. It's that Embiid wants to be with Butler, and Butler wants to be with Embiid. So do with that what you will. In terms of Miami's roster needing reshaping, I don't think that Daryl Morey would do business with Miami in that respect unless he has no other choice. I do think that there is validity to the Bradley Beals, more so than the Donovan Mitchell, even though Donovan Mitchell has made it very clear he wants to get out of town too. And I think we're doing the Donovan Mitchell thing because we assume Utah is the type of place that would like Duncan Robinson in $19 million, yes? Duncan Robinson's contract is something that uh, I'm guessing that Mike Ryan has jettisoned. And this will be the last embers of our local season will be here as we transition <laughs> into Tyreek Hill video propaganda. I love it. I really do love that as a story. The social media team didn't send out the right pass. It kind of had some wobble to it. Then Tyreek Hill, come on, you guys, this is practice. And then he sends out videos that are real sleek about balls not being underthrown. So I do want to transition into football and leave behind basketball. Before we do that, Dan, I went to the trade machine and I have good news for you. Okay, so I was able to work out a deal in which Miami trades Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero to Philadelphia and gets Joel Embiid and trades Kyle Lowry and Duncan Robinson to Brooklyn and gets Kevin Durant. And this is a successful trade. So you get Durant and Embiid, and you kind of trade away Bam, Tyler, Kyle, and Duncan okay. Robinson. Uh, Who says no? Yes. Uh, uh, Juju, go Brooklyn. ahead and uh, put uh, Basketball Insider Billy has reported that that trade is happening. Please just stamp that to his it's, name. It's successful trade. The, I mean, a successful, successful trade, trade is being reported yeah. by uh, Billy Gill of uh, of Dan Levitard's show. What's to God? The salaries do match up. I'm just asking. Excellent. If Doc Rivers feels like he's going to lose and beat, yes. and you can get go Bam ahead, for Billy. Embiid, don't you Excellent. do it? I'm I thrilled mean, that the salaries match up. Billy is reporting it publicly please send it out into the sphere and billy will take whatever the casualties are from his dookie bomb because he's reporting that they're going to get uh durant and everybody everybody that they want no just them beat him okay (laughs) drop the dookie Uh, very good uh i i am i i really do want though from the group i want you guys to hold my hand through as i learn in real time the details of what has happened with Gabe Kapler of the San Francisco Giants because he uh, was horrified by everything happening in America. From where I'm looking at it, and please fill in details for me because there's some sensitive subject matter here, and I'm admitting on the front end that I'm purposefully coming into this conversation sort of bemused about, well, did what just happen? Is this what I think just happened? Which is that Gabe Kapler took his position two days too early, did not consider that Memorial Day was coming and just went to his lifestyle brand blog and explained, well, I'll resume this in a couple of days after we've honored our military. Did he, is is what I think just happened, the shrapnel that takes out a, four, a, a Giants manager is that he got close to where the Kaepernick stuff is because, hey, you know, we're, we've stopped it. Kids slaughtered in schools. Now it's a controversial stand. LaRusse is out here saying, not in front of anthems and flags. Nope. You could protest whatever, but even kids getting slaughtered in schools, not in front of an anthem or flag. And Kapler sits it out. And before I get indignant on this, on, the, on, how, on how funny it seems, can you guys offer me details that suggest that it didn't happen the way that it looked like it happened, which is he's like, I'm going to not be a part of kids slaughtered in school. Oh, it's Memorial Day. Never mind. I'll I'll stand back up. Check out my words on my lifestyle brand. I am beautiful, steaming, hunky man. Really I've is. got a lifestyle brand. I look like the leader of a team. This is how I lead. You have to do that on July fifth, right? You have to factor in Independence Day as well. Is it well. what happened though? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It was bad timing. Yeah. That's a bad look. He for didn't him. think it through. No. 
He just got fed up one day and emotionally. Come on, you guys got to give me better details than that. Why is that uh, implausible? Yeah, he he didn't think it through. He was emotional, like a lot of people were last week, and then he realized the optics of uh, of doing that during Memorial Day were bad after the fact. Yeah, he did something uh, emotional. That that's how that kind of works. Well, in lieu to his protests, he's uh, also given money to a couple of charities. Uh, Every Town, which is an organization dedicated to ending gun violence, and to Heart and Armor, which focuses on veteran health. Man, it's so crazy to me, though, that we would, you know, see kids slaughtered in school. And if anybody decided to kneel in front of a flag on that one, anybody, and just said, well, this is the reason. This country, when it comes to guns, slaughters kids in school more than any. And I want my politicians to listen to all of the polling data that suggests that Americans are all for please stop slaughtering kids in school. We don't agree on anything, but we can get 90 percent on gre- agreement on as a country. We are not what we think we are if the slaughtering of kids in schools is OK by us. Like it's not we're the worst. We're the worst. We can't protect our young people. We're the worst. We're number one. We are the very worst in the world of we slaughter our kids and are okay with it. If anyone in sports decided to kneel on that, La Russa is still going to be out here saying not on the anthem, not in front of the flag. Like we, we can all agree. Who disagrees? Like, Tony like does. Find me the ten percent that are. At, find me the ten percent. And let me ask any questions of the of the ten percent. That can say, yeah, I'm good with kids slaughtered in schools, innocents slaughtered, and I'm good with the idea that parents can send their kids to school, expect to get them back. And in America, it's less likely than anywhere else in the world that you're going to get them back safely because they can be slaughtered in school and our leaders are okay with it as Americans beg and plead them through crying wails of stop killing our children to please fix the gun. Just whatever, gun safety, gun laws, whatever the language is, just fix the gun thing so that we can at least dilute the slaughtering of child blood on the country's hands. So tired of the anthem debate. I I just have no interest in it. Haven't had interest in it in years. Feel like uh, I, I I am burned up on all the anthem debate. I don't think anyone's mind is being changed. I find it to be kind of dumb. I I, I, do, I respect the reasons for doing it. I don't think you invoke anybody to actually look at themselves and say, well, if Gabe Kapler took a knee, let me reassess everything. It's just not it's just not happening. And I don't I'm so exhausted. I don't even want to talk about it, man. I'm at the point where I'm just like, don't don't play the anthem anymore. And the Mavericks tried. Of course, the state of Texas stepped in and said, you better. Well, the Mavericks tried and also got away with it for several games before people noticed. Because it's absurd that we play the anthem before sporting events. They should play the anthem before movies. They should play the anthem before concerts at this point. It, it, is, it is a weird exercise in mostly fake patriotism. And I'm just, I'm just done with it. Altogether. And if I told you the Heat players over the last three years have been in and out of the anthems in ways that have not been publicized, that your team has had several players in and out of the locker room every single certainly time not, that isn't about... Certainly not consistent enough for anybody to really take notice, and people get all sorts of treatment. Robert Williams hadn't been out there for the start of a third quarter in I don't know how many games. It's I, I don't pay attention to the anthem when I'm there. Sometimes it's beautiful... Sometimes I don't want to take my hat off because I'm worried about my hairline. It's just, why are we doing this? It's, it's, it's a weird practice that we do, and sometimes it's roaring, and I get to yell red at hockey games, and you hear a, a, a beautiful young lady that's like 15 years old sing her heart out, and it's a cool moment, but also it's, Mike, a, it's a tireless exercise. But Mike, you just saw so many people just flooded to the movie theater this weekend in a way that I did not think was possible in 2022 because Tom Cruise, who has had his face since before Risky Business, changed into a movie star robot so he can still be box office. Tom Cruise and the idea of us wanting to believe America is something worth fighting for did 124 million uh, nationally, 124 million internationally. In his great career, it's the first time that a movie has ever busted the box office at a time that it's harder than ever. And we've still got the tapes during the pandemic of him yelling at people in Norway because he's doing whatever crazy stunt he's doing because the 
holding on to Hollywood at the end is important to him. We want to believe in the movie version of America. We still want to believe that that flag is not what we think it's more and more representing with every action or inaction that is greedy and lusty and gets filed under under politics. I don't want to bore people with the anthem talk either. But, Mike, I do believe that in this space, it's the only place where you have it. And it's been contaminated from every angle by the politics of, I thought that flag represented some, something else. Didn't we all? Uh, I, I thought we all had the agreement on what that flag represented. I have a U.S. flag outside my home. I, I, I'm very proud to be an American. I reflect while I'm having a great time in the pool with my family. I honestly do reflect that I am in part exercising freedoms that are afforded to me by uncommon bravery. I am so thankful of it. And I am already pissed off at what's going to happen because people are going to take what I said. Oh, he doesn't want to take off his hat during the anthem. It's just such a poisonous, toxic because of your hair. It's just everyone can understand no. the insecurity of baldness. But I think. But I just don't like it. It. It means so much to so many people, and you're not changing anybody's mind. And I haven't once been made to think in the last five years when it comes to an anthem debate. Not one. What's the opinion that 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 will change your mind? That'll make you view it through a different prism? Please, somebody. No, tell me. I. This is just what I would say over the body of work as we've lived it to all of you. Colin Kaepernick knelt in front of that flag and do whatever you will with the reaction after that. Just know that the flag that he was kneeling in front of as a black man, he viewed it as representing something different than a lot of other people who are not black while talking about police as a state armed militia using their muscle on behalf of the government to protect white people from black people ultimately. That is what he knelt for. He became a martyr. Now the Raiders try and prop him up because they got a bigot who's getting the emails leaked. But through our lifetime, you could be tired of it all you want. But that dude died on that hill. Whatever it is that you think that represents was not well, allowed to. His career died. Was not. No, yes. His career or his career as a football player yes. died. And here yet still, yes, we're all tired of the whack-a-mole on this conversation. But he forced us to have it. And it's why he gets to be a martyr that 30 years from now will be remembered differently than the time that, that we're in. Because he told us that flag, no, that does not represent to me what it represents to you. And I will use my free speech and you will not be able to handle it when all I merely do out of respect after consulting a Navy SEAL is kneel to show maximum res respect for country and soldiers who have fought protecting what that was supposed to be for both of us. But what are we talking about here? We're talking about Gabe Kapler deciding to go against his protests and standing for the anthem on Memorial Day. Now, what's Memorial Day? We're talking about military personnel sacrificing their lives and dying for the freedoms that we are all enjoying, right? One of the freedoms we're talking about is the freedom of protest. So I think Memorial Day would have been the perfect day for Gabe Kaplan not to stand during the anthem. That, that's just my opinion. But he decides for only Gabe Kapler and what his lifestyle brand is. And all I tell you is the fire's still too hot for a manager who's got a lifestyle brand and doesn't need the money because he made plenty in his career as a player. And the fire's still too hot out there for some of them. Look, it's not Colin Kaepernick's fault, but we are a decidedly less good place to be living in. It's just, I, I am so exhausted by the flag debate that it got, while Colin... You could maybe read into his initial mishandlings of it, and but I believe in the reasons why, ultimately, he decided to protest the anthem. And it got everybody's attention, and it also spiraled off into the dumbest debate ever. And we just now have a new generation of flag porn to the point that if someone flies a U.S. flag on their car, I kind of have an idea of how they voted. And that's just how dumb we've gotten since Colin knelt. It, it, the flag became a symbol. But well, we can't get so dumb, Mike, that you go to your knees with a groan and are just like, you know what? I'm tapping out on the entire discussion, even though I've I've just lived it. And through sports, the place we were allowed to have it, as we talk about the way that they grind the bodies to dust of Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham because the machine needs to keep moving, that football machine still has not welcomed him back. We're still having an anthem conversation. Tony La Russa, and it's close to 80, is still out here saying... Protest anywhere 
but not there because that flag means something it does is different to me than it does to Tim Anderson, perhaps, my star player who I can't connect with because he's 50 years younger than me. And I'm still out here from the Glenn Beck rallies telling you that the flag is something that you shouldn't wipe your ass with recently because our behavior disgraces what it's supposed to purport to be about. You're Dan Quixote right now. You're tilting a windmill. You're not changing anybody's mind. We're not having an interesting conversation. It's the same dumb conversation that we've been having for years outside of some really productive conversations. And then we realize, oh, we're just going to double down and quadruple down on our own personal stupidity when it comes to this. I've spoken to several people so, is, that have shocked me with their opinions when it comes to the flag. It just, it is too, it is too divisive of a topic for anybody to wrap their head around. It's just, it's, it's a hard line that people draw. It is ingrained in their political beliefs it is tied up in their identity and there is no winning anybody over i hate that uh it's become such a political conversation and and i do think it's an important conversation i i honestly do because it's so you're in, glad we're having it mm -hmm. it's, it's so an important conversation you're glad we're having it. it's right? so intensely it. personal and it is for me uh i i stand for the national anthem uh because i'm standing for the ideal of the flag and what it should be not what it's become that's just me. I respect people. I was pro Kaepernick the whole but way. But Mike is I trying to push him. us off this as a conversation topic. He is saying, Dan, that have you ever looked around an arena or a stadium and see what people are doing while the anthem's being played? Yeah, but Mike, like Mike not taking his hat off. Yeah, there are people but, belching, but taking Mike, selfies, yes, but, putting in. But bets. Mike is saying none of this is new terrain. All of it is the same, same tired terrain. No, no advancement. For the record, I did take my hat off, which at the time during the last few months was a personal sacrifice. Well, <laughs> well, my question to these people who are offended at these uh, protests during the anthem, who feel like these protests are offending the troops, is what are you doing to help homeless veterans out there? Are you doing anything? Or are you just yelling at the wind? Are you yelling in the sky like, stop protesting? I mean, what are people that are standing doing? Thank you. Thank you. This is all so. Dumb. I'm not pro. I'm not. I'm just saying. I'm with Mike on this. This is just such a divisive issue. At this conversation. I'm just waiting for this conversation to be over. On the one year anniversary of, Jesus of, of Bo Burnham's inside, oh boy. being released, where he had a great bit, where it was just can can we all just can we all just maybe just shut the fuck up, just just everybody just. Shut the fuck up," he said in a special just, that was the viral just, sensation of the pandemic. Stop that, talking. I, I don't. I don't. I don't care. Just both sides. Just shut the fuck up. That's where I'm at with this. And now I'm scared. Did I say something offensive right there? Mm. I don't know. See, this is what we're doing. It's like this conversation. It's just like don't step on any landmines. Really? It's a dangerous game. It's all landmines. Yeah. I mean, Al Horford makes too much money to get him to the Heat next year. I think Ooh. that's a landmine. We're back. <laughs>